Hello everybody, my name is Ivan Freud. I am a PhD student and researcher currently working with the University of A Coruña. Today I am going to present this paper titled Power Consumption Analysis for the Develop of Energy Efficient Bluetooth 5 Based Real-Time Industrial IoT Systems. First of all, these are the contents. This presentation is divided into the following sections. First, I will give a brief introduction of the context in which the article is included. Then I will give details of the developed system and architect archi archi use, followed by an explanation of the experiments performed and results obtained. To finish with the conclusion, key findings and future work. As part of the contest, this project has two key aspects. It's focused on industrial environments and is a high data transmission, real time or near real time. Normally, industrial environments are characterized as harsh envir environments with limitations to power and positioning the devices. This is why in most cases is opted for batteries and wireless communications. Also presents considerable electrical noise or shielding. In this type of environment, it's common to use low power wide area network technologies. There are many sub technologies of this type, but all of them can be classified into two different groups depending on the spectrum in which they operate. There are those in the license spectrum that has an associate a monetary cost for the transmission. And those in the unlicensed spectrum has no monetary cost, but there is a limitation on the size and the time of the transmission, also known as duty cycle. This makes these technologies not suitable for real-time applications. Considering this, there is the 2.4 GHz band this band has no limit on the data transmission. However, the fact that there is a centimeter band offer less range than the LP1 basis, and sometimes it's complicated to use them in this kind of environment. With this band, there are several technologies widely used in IoT. Those belong to the IEEE 82.15.4 standard, such as Zigbee, and plus or thread, and Bluetooth Low Energy, which is widely used in IoT, mostly for short-range communication. Those belong to the former standard offer better sensitivity, and therefore more range than Bluetooth, while Bluetooth remains more energy efficient in data transmission. However, the release of the new Bluetooth 5 version improved many of the aspects of the previous version, especially interesting in the case of the improvement in range. Another key factor is the existence of an open source stack like the one offered by the Nordic Semiconductor Company, with a very complete SDK, well documented and certified by the Bluetooth CIG, which helps notably in the development of such a specific project as this one. I am not going to talk about the design and architect develop. In this case, two different architects were tested. Both of them can be used independently. One is a linear daisy chain architect, the other is a BLE mesh. Both use codes modulation, also known as long, as long range which is a, a specific of the new Bluetooth 5 standard. The difference lies in the communication. While in the linear DC chain, each node in the chain forwards the message to the previous connect one, in the mesh, the message are broadcast to all nodes in range. This is the best approach in terms of redundancy, but is not uh, very energy efficient, as this involves continuous scanning. Although there is a low power mesh node, those nodes that add as relays will need a constant power supply. Linear mode doesn't have this energy dependency, 
but if an intermediate node fails to communicate, the message will not reach its destination. Regarding the sensor nodes, they transmit very frequently. In this particular case, we designed a device that measures the concentration of O2, which is the first image on the right. This was done on an Arduino developed board. They use a SOC of Nordic and code with the official SDK. The data is sent by Bluetooth, then is received by a smartphone and processed in an Android app, which is the second image, where you can see that shows a dashboard and many widgets with their received values. These values are updated every second to have a quick monitoring for sudden change in O2 levels. The last picture is a Nordic development kit that was used for experimental purpose, as I will describe as follows. Concerning the mesh topology, it's a standard of BL4, so there is no official implementation for Bluetooth 5, and it's necessary to modify internal libraries in order to achieve a proper operation with the codex modulation. In both cases, it's necessary to have a smartphone that fully supports Bluetooth 5 to be able to interpret the data. So with these two architecture design as well as the sensor node, a set of tests were carried out to determine in both its energy efficiency and the improvement that provides in range with respect to the legacy version of Bluetooth 4. To do this, we first measured with the codex modulation the power consumption at different transmission power levels. The result can be seen in this table. As it can be observed, there is no significant difference in the power consumption by decreasing the transmission power. Advertisement events are used only as an entry point of a client. Once connected to the GAT, only GAT requests or, or replace events are used. So most of the time, only these events will be used. With this event, it can be observed that in most of the, of the levels, only one micron pair of energy is saved lower into the previous one. Then we did a similar approach to check the coverage. In this case, we also test different power levels and compare with the results obtained with the legacy version at the same levels. For this case, the range in line of sight was not important. So different points in our indoor env environment were selected and then compared the legacy and coded version under the same condition. This means that in both comparisons, we use the same power levels and the same positions and orientation of the device. The results are shown in this table. It can be seen that the improvement with the coded version is significant for the minus 16 and minus 12 levels. At the lowest levels, uh, minus 30 and minus 40, the impact on the coverage is significant. Even though some can be received with coded, comparing the values of the previous table, the savings using the two lowest level is not very significant compared to the minus 16 and minus 12, but not in range, which is much better with these levels. In this case, we managed to improve significantly the reception rates. With minus 16, we obtained an error rate of 16% in codes versus 90% in legacy. With minus, minus 12, uh, there were no packet losses in code compared to 57% packet loss in legacy. It's quite clear that the codex modulation is better than legacy in terms of range, but it's also important to determine the difference in power consumption since the codex version involves frames with more time on air, and more use of the radio module means higher power consumption. For this case, we made a comparative between the advertisement and guide request events for both modulations. We decided to use an oscilloscope to analyze the operating voltage curve of the node over a shunt resistor. This was done on a Nordic development kit, which allows to measure only the power consumption of the SOC, avoiding the consumption of, of, of other 
passive components such as voltage regulator of or power pass necessary in the development and that would distort the measure of consumption since they are not designed to offer low power efficiency. In the following graph, we can see the performance of both events. We can see that the peaks are quite similar, but the main difference is in the duration of the events. In the following table, it's possible to observe how the duration is significantly longer for coded, especially in the advertised event. It can be seen that the advertisement event has a longer duration in both modulation compared to the GAT event, which is why it is not very efficient mechanism in terms of consumption. In the case of the coded modulation, it lasts almost twice longer than in the legacy version, lasting more than six milliseconds. Regarding the consumption in mesh mode, a low power node also known as LPN was analyzed. The following graphs show a much lower duration than the obtaining in the GAT architect. Despite the fact that the GAT better events of the mesh standard were not implemented in codes, their duration is minimal. Even taking into account the longest time on air, the duration will be less than one millisecond. In the case of mesh publication events, it was implemented with coded and it can be seen that its duration is approximately half of a millisecond. So in the MES protocol, communication events are therefore faster and more efficient. However, this is not the case with the nodes that function as relays. Finally, I would like to conclude with the key aspect of the project. There is no significant energy savings between the different low levels of transmission power, although it's true that the two lower ones have a significant impact on the range. The GAT architect is more energy efficient than the MES mod, but less robust. Although the communication in the nodes with the client server or proxy roles is more efficient in the MES than in GAT, the relay role nodes needs a constant energy source. The reception is much better in codes, especially at low power levels, where it can be seen quite favored in offer and offer a more stable communication for noise environment. To attain a better efficiency in coded due to the higher time on air, it's necessary to use a small payload in the transmission and avoid excessive advertisement. With all of this, the following aspect of the developed system can be concluded. First, codes modulation offer a better reception, which is especially interesting on industrial environments. The system itself remains energy efficient as long as very large spread loads are not needed, and it's also possible to use reduced transmission time. It's necessary to consider the specific case of use and find a balance between energy savings coverage and network redundancy that suits the need of the system. As part of the future development, among other things, uh, do a better implementation of some aspects in the mesh standard for a more complete operation with codes, such as the gate bearer. It's also possible, uh, thanks to the high granular granularity level of the Nordic SDK, uh, to tweak certain aspects to improve even more the efficiency. Another interesting topic that is being developed is the use of alternative mechanisms to power this type of device. In the picture, we can see a piezoelectric module that generates energy from vibrations. To date, uh, we achieve uh, to generate with a single module an approximate current of 250 microamperes. This is very interesting to power low consumption device like the one used in this project. And to conclude, just mention that this work has been funded by the Junta de Galicia, the Agencia Estatal de Investigación of Spain, and the European Regional, Regional Development Fund. And that was all. Uh, thank you so much for your time.